Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if you created the perfect regen in the game. Now, so far we've gone up to the age of 25 with this player. Uh, it's about 10 years of his career and you can see he's already got 74 goals for England. It's re England's record goal scorer now. And when we look at the career stats, he's also got 234 Premier League goals. Um, absolutely smashing records left and right and he's probably got another 10 or more years left in his career. Um, Quite a lot of you over the last few parts have pointed out that having the stats all split like this doesn't make him the best player in the world. So I've tr tried to make it work so that they will stay at 20. I'm going to change them all back to 20. And then when we go forward this time, they will still be at 20 um, when we look at his future bits. So that means he isn't just the best player as a striker, but he's also the best player in every position on the pitch, um, except for maybe goalkeeper, but even there he's going to have 20 for GK. Um, so he is a very, very good player at that point. I'm also going to drop his loyalty down to one, which is a very common criticism. Um, now, loyalty isn't that much of a factor, I'm afraid. Now, when you are at a big club and you are the best player, you carry them to titles, and that is what this experiment almost universally achieves, which means a player has no reason to leave because he believes he can win everything at the club he's at. Um, so I've not looked at what's going to happen next, but when I've done that independently, it really doesn't make an awful lot of difference. So I'd be surprised if he did leave Arsenal, which I know will be disappointing to a lot of you. But I'm not going to interfere in this by moving him to a different club or trying different things. The idea of this was just to go forward and see what happens. Now we'll go forward in a minute, but just a quick word to say, there is no sponsorship on this video. I know that I had uh, a long think about the sponsorship over the last few days, but ultimately the company couldn't assure me uh, the things that I wanted so um, I decided it wasn't really in the interest of the channel for me to take on the sponsorship at this time but given you guys were quite open to it in the future it may well happen. Um, so let's go forward now five years into the future and see if he can finally try and win the Champions League with Arsenal. Well, we are now five years into the future and our wonder kid is 30 years old. As you can see, his stats did stick at 20 for these last five years. So that will make a huge change in terms of his ability as a striker. And you can see he's already scored 166 goals for England now in 166 games. Definitely the most goals any player has ever scored in international football. Um, and I think he was on about 70 when we left off, so he's scored another 90 in the five years since then. Given he was playing for 10 years before that, it shows how much difference these stats have made. Um, now valued at £80 million, which I think is less than it was before, but given he's 30, you would expect that to happen. But he is on more money at four hundred grand a week. Still three years on his contract. Nobody's been able to move him with wages like that. It would be very, very difficult to do so. Um, but he does look very impressive. Now, if we have a look at his milestones and see what he's achieved over the last five years... Then you can see where we left off, they were the Premier League and FA Cup winners. So they'd done the double, um, and you can see he was named in the season's best 11 as well. He was the best player in Europe. They did win the Community Shield the following year, um, and lots of other little awards coming in for him, as you would expect. Uh, broke the England record for the highest average rating in a season with 9.47, nearly a perfect 10 in 10 appearances, which is incredible. Um, and he did finally win the Golden Ball. Would you look at that? We did have, in the first episode, a little pool going on who would get the guess right for Golden Balls. This is the first one that he's won. There's five years still to go. Will he win all of them? That's the question now. Uh, because some people were guessing as many as 10 Ballon d'Ors, but we'll have to see if he can possibly reach that height so late in his career. But it's great that he has finally managed to do that. He's also in the World Team of the Year. Um, now if we keep going forward, that was obviously would have happened in January. Broke the record for the Carabao Cup average rating and picking up all of the Player of the Month awards just continually winning the Premier League again, retaining it there for the second year and breaking the average uh, record there as well, average rating. Uh, Footballer of the Year, um, Premier Division Team of the Year, Supporters Player of the Year, Best Eleven. Um, no other competitions though. Uh, Golden Boot runner-up in the Champions Cup, but they did not win that. Best Player in Europe, Golden Shoe runner-up overall. Um, 
broke the England record for highest average appearances in this season in the European Football Championship. Named England captain in 2028. Finally, he gets the captain's armband for England, but can he win them anything? That's a real question. But can he win them anything? That's the real question on everybody's mind. Uh, winners of the Community Shield for a second year. Lots more awards coming in, as you would expect. Um, and he does win his second consecutive Golden Ball, trying to go after Messi and Ronaldo's record now uh, in the World Team of the Year, as you would expect. Uh, more awards coming in, and then towards the end of the year, won the Premier League another year. Footballer of the Year once more, third best goal scorer, which is interesting that he didn't manage to win that outright. Um, lots of other records. They won the Champions League, finally. They have won the Champions League in 2029, League and Champions League winner. Golden boot in the Champions League as well. Supporters player of the year. Broke the Arsenal record for goals scored in a season with 45 goals. So that's a nice record to get. Best player in Europe. Won the European Super Cup the following season. Uh, but didn't win the Community Shield. Lots more awards coming in. Uh, breaking the record. 9.75 in eight appearances for England there. Um, winners of the Club World Championship. And a third golden ball as well. Uh, which is very good. Um, Still carry on to the end of the year. Did they retain the Premier League again? They did. He also finished top goalscorer runner-up, but was Footballer of the Year once more. Um, third place in the Golden Boot for the Champions League. Doesn't look like he won that, but finished fourth in the World Cup for England. That's really disappointing. Still unable to win the World Cup, but it does mean they made the semi-finals, which is at least something. Uh, and he was the best player at the World Cup, named in the Dream Team. Um, and broke the record for the highest average rating in a season in the World Cup, uh, which I don't think is going to be a particularly high record. Quite low in his rating, actually, 8.64, uh, which is maybe why they weren't able to be carried all the way through. Um, lots more things coming in the following season. Won the Golden Ball for a fourth time. Um, named in the team, World Team of the Year again. You can see the 20 ratings really kicking in here with these Golden Balls coming in, and that's because he is now maxed out in his position. Uh, Player of the Month awards coming in. Winners of the Premier League once again. Uh, broke the average rating, Footballer of the Year. Runners up in the Champions League, unable to win it for a second time. Uh, but lots more personal awards coming in. Record for league goals scored in a season with 33 league goals. Winners of the European International League. England have won something. Would you look at that? Finally, a competition win for England. Maybe not the highest profile one, but still a very good one to get. Golden shoe for Arsenal. Community Shield as well as we get towards the final season that we're interested in. Golden Ball once more. I think that's five now. Five Golden Balls for him, which is pretty impressive. We'll have a look at that in more detail in a minute. Um, but Premier Division winners for a fifth year in a row, I believe. Not winning the FA Cup very much, though, which is interesting. Footballer of the Year, though, there's the FA Cup. Another FA Cup win for him. Um, Supporters Player of the Year broke the average appearance record in the Champions Cup. Golden Boot runner-up. Best player in Europe. Uh, football European Football Championship here was the best player but it looks like England did not win it, which is interesting. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the 32 season. Um, so England still not won a major championship except for that European International League. Uh, but he has now won the Champions League at least. He's also won the Premier League five times at least. Um, just countless, countless records. But the really, really good thing to have seen him achieve is winning the Golden Ball. And if we have a look at this... We can see that he has now won it five years in a row, beating off Mbappe um, every year, I think, here, which is unfortunate for Mbappe because he would have been the world's best player. Uh, it was actually Vinicius Jr. that he beat off in the first one that he won, but very, very good there. Five in a row, the first time anybody's done that in a very long time. Has anybody done five in a row? Messi did four in a row, so he set the independent record there. Uh, but Messi with 6-7 overall, uh, and Ronaldo had one, two, three, four, uh, just four for Ronaldo. So he's only one behind Lionel Messi for the most um, best player in the world awards, which is very impressive. Uh, but he is now 30 years old and it's going to get harder and harder to keep winning that award with his age. Uh, if we have a look at the Premier League uh, and its past winners, I think you'll see a common theme occurring there. 
Uh, you can see at the moment still winning that league quite comfortably, but they have won it now six years on the trot and seven of the last eight years. Man City really being kept out by them. Interesting to see West Ham, Southampton all up in the top four as well. Uh, but he's now won it uh, eight times overall, which is not a bad haul for one player in the Premier League. And if we look back through the season, you can see at the moment they are unbeaten. The year before that, um, finished with 100 points but two defeats. 100 points the year before that, again with two defeats. Five defeats the year before that uh, and the year before that as well. Three, then four, then still not able to do the unbeaten season. They lost that season to Watford, if I remember right, uh, missing out on another Invincibles year, but very, very much dominating the league. And it's all down to one player. If we have a look at his career stats page and drop back down to that first season, which I think would be this one, the 27-28 one, uh, when the, nine, the average rating went up from 8.21 to 9.24, an entire one-point increase, which is just phenomenal. Uh, goals going up as well overall, 40 goals in 50 games, 46 player of the matches in 51 matches, explains why he is the best player in the world. Uh, the following year, 45 goals, five extra goals, but he did play some more games, uh, 38 goals overall the year after that, 41 the year after that, and 41 again the year after that. Still not reaching the Ronaldo and Messi levels of goals, but he is getting a lot of assists as well, and his player of the match awards are outrageously high, so he's doing a very, very good job there. Uh, if we have a look at Arsenal's overall record as well uh, through their senior squad schedule, um, you can see they've made a perfect start to this season, but if we go to the right screen again and then go back to one, two, three, four, five seasons. Uh, you can see this is the first season with this high rating and there's a few draws, a few defeats in here, an excellent unbeaten run there, but then getting knocked out of both competitions really. And then the Champions League, they did get past PSG. I th oh no, they went out against PSG there. Um, but overall, a very, very good run of form there. The following season, again, a few defeats at the early parts of the season, but doing very, very well for a long, long period of time. And then winning the Champions League 3-0, he did score in that final, and it was at Wembley. What a place to win the Champions League for an English club. 3-0 over PSG. They had to struggle past Southampton in at the semi-finals of the Champions League. What is going on at Southampton? We'll take a look at that at the end of this um, part of the experiment. But uh, the following season, again, lots and lots of green on the screen. You can see his impact here. It's getting the crucial goals at the crucial time, but not going very far in any of the competitions. The following year, again, a lot of green, quite a bit of red though, actually. Um, and they did make it to the Champions League final, losing on penalties, which is a really harsh way uh, to be knocked out of that um, competition. But they did get past Real Madrid in the quarterfinals, which is quite impressive, um, and beat Atletico Madrid in the semifinals, both home and away. The following year, again, that is an impressive run of wins, but defeats in the Community Shield 4-2, 3-2 away against Newcastle, 3-2 at home against Leicester in the Carabao Cup, um, but a lot of wins on the board, losing in the Champions League uh, semifinals to Chelsea. Um, not able to overcome their 3-1 win away f at Stamford Bridge, but they did beat them in the FA Cup semi-final and then beat Southampton 4-1 in the FA Cup final. Giancaldo Jr. with the goal. Um, and at the moment, that takes us up to the current day. So it's worth having a look at Southampton, given how much they've achieved. They've got a worldwide reputation, but only OK finances. But you can see they've been finishing pretty high up the table there, uh, finally dropping down to sixth place. But if we look at their... Uh, competitions history. You can see they finished runners-up in 1984, but now they've had two third-place finishes in recent history. And they did win the Carabao Cup in 2021, but no major glories. Uh, runner-up in the UA, uh, Europa League three times in seven years, including this season, which is really, really unfortunate for them. If we have a look at the Champions League as well, and the past winners overall for this competition. We've already looked at the ones for the Premier League, but you can see here a lot of English teams in there. Arsenal been in the final so many times with Chen Caldo Jr. That's five finals he's been in, and he's only won one of them, which is really disappointing. City, though, picking up four Champions League titles, I think, 
Uh, Chelsea picking up another couple as well. Man United even got one, but Real Madrid really the team winning it. No sign of Barcelona in the final for a very long period of time, which is unusual um, in Football Manager. Let me know if that happens in your saves as you go forward into the future as well. But Real Madrid seem to be the dominant team in Spain, um, which is quite interesting. And we've already seen that with England, they haven't managed to win... Um, any real major European competition. But we will just have a quick look at their uh, fixtures just so we can see how they managed to do uh, going back over time. And you can see this time around getting knocked out of the European Championship uh, in the semi-final stage, 2-0 by Spain, which is unfortunate. They did beat Portugal, Giancaldo Gini scored in that game, but knocked out in the semi-final stage. The previous year, they won the International League 1-0. Jadon Sancho with the goal, delivering them their first major senior international honour for a long, long time. Uh, helped by a fifth-minute sending off uh, by France in the semi-finals. Giancaldo Jr. scored in the first minute anyway, um, but then won against Italy 1-0 at Goodison Park in England. Not exactly a neutral venue there, despite what they're claiming. Uh, but the, the semi-final at Hillsborough and final at Goodison Park is really interesting. 41,000 fans at Goodison Park for that one. Um, the year before that, in the World Cup semi-final, beaten on penalties by Spain. That's so unfortunate. They did win in the quarterfinals. Giancarlo Jr. with two goals uh, and the winning goal in the end there. Um, and they got past Switzerland with 55, 45 plus one and 45 plus two minute goals from Giancaldo Jr. Um, but beaten by Spain and then crushed by Italy uh, in the losers playoff, which is really just a shame to go out on penalties to Spain as well. If it was Germany, I'd understand it, but to Spain is just unfortunate. Um, nothing the year before that, knocked out the quarterfinals by Italy. They seem to have a real problem with Italy. Um, nothing the year before that and in the World Cup semi-final again knocked out by Portugal there that was where we left off last time and you can see it's been a tough time for England but when isn't it they are managed by Mourinho so maybe there is still something to come Giancaldo Jr is still playing for England so maybe there will be success in the next part but that is going to be it for this part of this experiment let me know what you think about the changes back up to 20 and about the loyalty being reset to one. He hasn't moved club at this point, but let me know what you think about his successes with the Ballon d'Or, the Champions League, um, and if you think he will win a major competition with England, because that's really the last thing missing on his CV. Um, when we get far enough forward, I am going to see if he becomes a manager. I'm going to try not to go too far ahead uh, once he be retires, because he will probably become a manager very, very quickly, given his mental stats. Um, so if he does become a manager, I think we'll keep this series going and see how he does as a manager as well. Uh, but drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed this and if you enjoyed the changes to 20 on the stats and one on loyalty. Make sure to subscribe as well. These videos come out every two days and you can also check out my Newcastle series. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can use the link in the description. You can also uh, support the channel on Patreon if you would like. But until next time, see ya.